Hey everyone, welcome back to this channel. My name is Kathy, and today we are trying out something new. What we will be doing is going to be what other people call as a whip or a work in progress, and it's going to be a whip with me. So it's a work in progress with me while we discuss some of the things that I wished I actually knew before I started doing diamond painting or you know when I was just starting out doing diamond painting so hi my name is Kathy on this channel we do diamond paintings journaling sometimes we talk about finance and oftentimes we actually do unboxings and review so if this is your kind of thing um, please feel free to subscribe give us a like share comment uh, for small YouTubers like myself, this is a huge thing. It helps with the algorithm and it helps to let YouTube know to actually recommend the video. Um, lately, especially here in the Philippines, there has been a huge, huge surge of diamond painters. And since there are a lot of newbies, I thought that it's best to share a little bit of knowledge that I've gained over the five years that I've been doing diamond painting. So if that is something that you'd like to support, um, please stay tuned. Okay, so we are back. And as mentioned, we are actually doing a work in progress. This is a diamond painting that I got from origmall.com. They are a local store here in the Philippines and they do personalized uh, diamond painting. So for this one, this is actually a face of my son, which I'll show on the screen. And this is a 30 by 30, so it's a pretty small um, size canvas. But since this is a close-up shot of my child, it's actually just perfect because sometimes you know um, when you're doing diamond painting I guess it depends on the mood so uh, I guess this will be our uh, tip number one of the things that I wish I knew when I was just started when I was just starting out with diamond painting uh, tip number one is that knowing the size matters okay so sometimes when we're very new we get all excited and you know we see the big diamond painting done by others and they're massive like some of them are as big as walls and we think okay i want to go ahead and do that and then we order without looking at the specifications you know depends if you're buying from shopee lazada a local seller or aliexpress or etsy or amazon for those abroad and we don't look at the size and then it comes and we're very disappointed we get very upset because what comes in is the usual 30 by 40, which is, I think, a little bit bigger than um, an A4, but definitely a lot smaller than the wall-sized ones that we would see um, shown off on diamond painting groups. So that would be number one, is knowing, um, knowing how to identify sizes. So that's tip number one is know how to identify the sizes when you see that it says centimeters know how to um, convert it to inches know that 30 by 40 is not big that if you're doing landscape then you need a bigger one okay so that's tip number one for me tip number two for me would be knowing the right size of the pen and the tray so this one that i'm using right now this is a regular size tray if you're doing one of the big ones like the wall sized ones this using a small size tray would be frustrating because you'd be using a lot of colors a lot of beads per color and if you have to keep refilling over and over again it can be quite uh frustrating for a lot of people so if you're doing the big ones you also need the big tray see how different the two are so this is the huge one this is the regular size one since i'm just doing a 30 by 30 this one is more than enough for me and then for the drill pen we always mention in this channel that you can use the pink ones that come with the kit the you know the regular size um pink pink drill pens but if you are 
uh, doing diamond painting, if you have been doing diamond painting for quite some time, this regular pen could be actually hurtful, harmful to the hand because as you can see, this requires more uh, leverage as opposed to this where I can be more relaxed. So do you see the difference? This, it feels like I have to clinch or clench my hands more as opposed to this one where I'm more comfortable. Now some of you might ask, how will I know? Actually, that's the thing with diamond painting. It's kind of a trial and error and I guess the best basis for the drill pen would be how fat are your regular pens that you use that you are comfortable with. Base it on that. So how thick or how fat, I don't know which one is politically correct. I guess it's how thick, how thick the drill pens are because if you will see here, see, they're huge difference, right? Like, let me show you there, huge difference in the thickness so i'm more comfortable with this than this and then make sure that when you buy your drill pens buy the one that you know fits your budget don't buy the one that is way out of your budget just because it's prettier or because everyone's using it again you always have to be mindful especially in this time of the money that you are spending because always remember the diamond painting is supposed to relax you, not add to your stress, okay? That's the key thing with diamond painting is that this is meant to relax you, not add to your stress. And if you keep buying and buying and it's making you more stressed, then again, it defeats the purpose of diamond painting, okay? So now, tip number three is find your why. So you may say like, what? Find your why? Why? <laughs> Well, find your why. Why are you doing diamond painting? Aside from, it helps to relieve stress. Why do you keep, you know, finishing projects? Are you doing it for yourself to decorate your home? Are you doing it as a gift for other people? Now, if you are doing it as a gift for other people, make sure that when you actually choose the designs, you actually like it. In the sense that, for example, my son hates anything that's monochromatic so if there's just a few colors and there's just like say for example the money tree the money tree is obviously almost like mostly yellow or orange like 70 percent of the canvas is just one color he doesn't like that so if i make him do something like that he will get sick and tired of diamond painting with me if it's too colorful i get agitated like, mm, no, <laughs> I just get so bothered that I have to keep changing beads. I have to keep, you know, changing colors. It, it bothers me. So you have to find out your why so that you also know your tolerance level. And then according to your why as to why you're doing this, you can adjust everything else and make sure that if you're doing this as a gift for someone, you meet halfway to the point that they would like the design, but at the same time, you will enjoy doing what you're doing so that you won't stop halfway or you won't get burnt out. Because again, and I will keep saying this over and over again, diamond painting is supposed to relax you, okay? It is meant to relax you, to lessen your mental um, anxiety. It is supposed to be um, a mindless thing that you're doing that, you know, it's the repetition that's actually soothing to your brain. So, the repetitive motion of getting the drip, the bead, putting the bead, and then you do it over and over again. It's actually what helps to calm down your brain from all the anxiety that it suffers. And there's almost no decision making in diamond painting. So, that's the other um, added factor. Okay? Now, for the... I think we're already on number three, right? So for number four, it's finding out whether you, you like the round beads or the square beads. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So for me, I prefer the round beads. If you give me a really great design, but it's square beads, I will feel stressed. I will feel agitated. So for example, I ordered something from Lazada. I was so excited. It was a Beauty and the Beast, the... It was the rose, the, the rose-covered thing. <sighs> it came in squares. So now it's just 
lying sadly somewhere in my room because I can't bring myself to do it. I tried and I just get so stressed. So find out which one you favor. I suggest buying, if you're just new to this, buying two designs that are both small, like 30 by 40, or if you can get 30 by 30, better. And then get one with uh, squares, get the other one with round, uh, round beads. And then try both so that you would know from the get-go which one you prefer so that in the future when you order your big canvases, you won't make the mistake of ordering something that you won't enjoy finishing. Okay? So there, we're finished with that one legend. We're going to move on to the next one. And the reason that I like this uh, tray is because it's really easy to put back beads into their Ziplocs. Okay. So, that's tip number four. Find out if you're a round person or a square kind of person. And then, pick it up from there. Now, number five that you should remember is, when you do diamond painting, the tendency is you will be doing it for hours on end. Because again, it's very relaxing. But, what people don't realize is that since it's quite relaxing, the tendency to... Do it for hours can actually affect your back. So if you're doing this with the wrong posture, that's going to be a big problem. So make sure that when you're doing your diamond painting, you are doing it where you're comfortable, where your back is comfortable, where your neck is not strained, or else you're going to have uh, back problems, joint problems, neck problems, and that's not a good thing. So make sure that when you do your diamond painting, you are comfortably seated, the lighting is great so that you don't strain your eyes. The table is at a good length. Um, in, what do you call that? Uh, the table, the, the height of the table is good in accordance with how you're seated. I can't remember the right term, so help me out guys. Somebody leave a comment down below to tell me what's the right phrasing or the right term to use. So... But I think some of you know how it's supposed to be, right? So, there. So, those are the five things that I wish I knew before I started doing diamond painting or when I was just doing diamond painting to make diamond painting more enjoyable for me. I hope that this helps out a newbie. I hope that um, you guys are learning something from the videos that I am making. If it helps just one person, then you know this video is already all worth it. And I hope that you enjoyed doing this with me. Um, let me know if you'd like to do more of this work in progress while I share tips and tricks to make life easier for your diamond painting journey. And I will do more of this because I actually enjoyed this. This is quite relaxing. I feel like I'm talking to friends that I just don't see or have not met yet. Um, and it makes doing this a bit more enjoyable. So again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on your next, on my next video, not on your next video. I'll see you guys on my next video. And always remember to find your happy because you deserve it. Bye guys.